Thank you. I am not okay with that. No, I'm kidding. It's fine. <laughs> um, welcome to Style of the Month. This is the last time that I'm going to be talking about beer in Style of the Month. So I'm really excited that it's close to the end. I didn't realize how much of an adventure this would be when I signed up to do these things. <laughs> so um, starting off the bat, smoked flavored beers. The first three here, these are all historical styles. Um, Rausch beer, Lichtenheiner, and P. Woke Brzezinski, which we talked about a couple of minutes ago. Um, so a Rausch beer, this is just a smoked German Marzen, which we talked about a few meetings ago, maybe three or four meetings ago. It's like a, a German um, festival <coughs> beer, um, and then you're smoking it. Um, Lichtenheiner, this is similar-ish to Piwo. For the most part, you can ignore the graphs on the side when it comes to comparing the beers side by side because the historical styles don't really compare that way. However, Lichtenheiner and Piwo are fairly similar. The distinction is that the Lichtenheiner has the sour note to it and the Piwo has no sour to it. Sour is a serious fault. Other than that, they're both very nice, light, highly, highly, <clears throat> highly carbonated and refreshing uh, smoked beers. After that, the smoke and wood age catch-all categories. So the first one, a classic style smoked beer. This is addition of smoke to a classic style. And when we say classic style, I'm referring to BJCP categories one through 27. So unless it is explicitly mentioned in the style guideline, there's generally nothing wild, nothing fruited, nothing spiced, nothing smoked. And it's also a, it must be a style that does not already have a smoked variant. So you could not enter a smoked Marzen because a smoked Marzen has a named smoked variant, which is a Rausch beer, which we just spoke about. If you wanted to do a smoked non-classic style, so maybe something Brett, um, and add fruit to that, or if you wanted to take a style which is typically smoked and then add fruit, spice, bread, whatever, that would make it go into a specialty smoked beer category. Um, wood aged classic style is similar to the classic style smoked beer with the addition that you cannot have any alcohol character added from the wood. So if you wanted to do a a bourbon barrel aged imperial stout that would push it into a specialty wood aged beer because of the extra alcohol character that it's adding. Um, yeah. Um, moving on to specialty beer, alternative grain is what it sounds like with the distinction that the alternative grain that you are using has to play a pretty big note in it. Uh, it should provide the majority of the aroma and flavor. Alternative sugar is very similar to that. So if you're gonna add maple syrup, maple syrup or honey, and it's going to be uh, imparting a considerable amount of flavor to it, aroma and flavor, that's where something would go in here. And then there's the clone or commercial, commercial specialty beer. So when I started the Style of the Month series, um, we were working with the BJCP 2015 guidelines. 2021 guidelines have since been released and this style has been renamed to commercial, spe commercial specialty. It was clone beer. Uh, and this is a controversial category that not a lot of people like, but I'm a fan of it. So this is for a beer that you are making that is it, an interpretation of a commercial example and that commercial example does not fit nicely into the BJCP guidelines. So you can't say, um, I want to make an innocent gun because innocent gun fits into a BGC category. However, Orval, which is the distinction, which is the example that they give in the BJCP guidelines, and I think it's a great example, that does not fit into a BJCP, BJCP category. Um, it's a Trappist beer, yes, but it's dry hopped and it's brewed with a very distinct Brett strain. So it gives it this really unique flavor and it it's a flavor that would be a fault if it were entered into a BJCP category. So that's why it's the quintessential example of this style, I think. Moving on from that, we have the other historical category. Other historical is 
again, it's a catch-all category for traditional or indigenous styles that are not mentioned. So you would not put a Lichtenhainer or a Rausch beer here because, or a prohibition pre-prohibition porter because those are explicitly mentioned. But if you wanted to brew a Katinas, which is a traditional Lithuanian brew, which is the pictures on the right, that would go into this category. And by the way, just a note, if anybody has brewed one, please save me a bottle. <laughs> it's a style I've wanted to try for a really long time, but um, the mash is baked in an oven and it's quite an ordeal. I haven't had a chance to do it myself. Um, moving on from that mixed style beer, this is where you take two styles and you smush them together. Uh, and then experimental is, it's like the interpretive dance of beers. Like I wanna make a, a creamsicle beer or something like that, or I'm putting cricket protein into the beer. That's where all of this crap goes into the experimental category. We have two examples in the recipe database. First is an experimental beer, which is a wet, wet hop harvest ale. This is something that we brewed back in the day when our club used to brew at the meetings. And then there's Daryl's famous piwo, which is really, really good. There are a, quite a lot of locally available examples. Um, Aaron at Little Beasts has a Rausch beer and a smoked rosette with black garlic, which I think pushes it into a mixed style of beer and not experimental. Uh, I listed Orval here. I don't think it's available at the LCPO, but Zach has it. And then quite topical today's meeting, the Sun and Hill smoke blogger, which is not available, but it's topical for the meeting and it's really, really, really good. Nickelbrook has their barrel aged whiny bastard. Um, there's a ton of barrel aged beers um, like Double Tempest as well. Toronto has like amazing versions of that style. And the Royal City Brewing Smoked Honey Brown. Uh, right now I'm drinking Innocent Gun, which is of course a nice barrel aged beer as well. And then that's it for beer. Uh, we're gonna be moving on to cider next. Um, I think next month we might have a cider presenter as well. So it's gonna go nicely. We do have a couple examples, or sorry, one single example on the recipe database as well. Um, Peter Hoog, and he wins a lot of competitions with his ciders. So if you've ever wanted a foolproof, re foolproof recipe to try, this is definitely one to go to. And that's it for style of the month. Thanks, Emily. Uh, am I still on mute? I can't oh. tell. Oh, okay. Oh, you're good. <laughs> I, I hate that. Uh, spotlight. Thank you, Emily. And I will stop the recording. And then we will move on.